and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. Today I'm going to be giving you three furniture flips and the very first one is a vintage piece that I picked up from a yard sale. The second piece is going to be this couch that I got for free from somebody donating it to me for my cause. And then the third piece is something that I picked up from the same yard sale as the first piece. These three pieces were all in pretty rough shape, the first one probably being the worst. The second one was actually in really good shape, it just needed to be kind of updated. And then the third one, I wanted to give it a completely new look. If you are new to my channel, I love to do tons of furniture flips and thrift store makeovers and trash to treasure things like that. I love turning something that was old and dingy into something really beautiful. So if that's something that you're into, then hit subscribe down below so that you can see more. Here we go on to our first project. So like I was saying, I got this table from a yard sale. It's a Duncan Five style table. It is not actually Duncan Fife. He is a designer that died a very, very, very long time ago, I believe in the 1800s. So anything that is newer than that is just an ode to his design. And this piece still had the original brass feet on it, which I thought was really neat. I'm pretty sure it was brass by the way that it has kind of aged and tarnished. And they were all there. It was only missing one little tiny nail on one of the feet. And then here there was some damage where it was missing a screw. And the holes where they had been screwed in had been split. That's really common here in the desert. Wood tends to split and dry out. And um, those are issues that happen quite a lot. But look at these feet are still there. They're just a little loose. So all I had to do to fix the feet were just to gently hammer them back in. And when I say gently, I mean as gently as you can hammer something. <laughs> the main thing is just to brace those legs. Now I'm going to take the base completely off of the top of the table. That way I can repair the issue that was causing the screws to come out. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and clean this drill attachment that I have for this video. I just recently purchased it off Amazon and I have it linked in my store for you guys. Uh, it was really nice using this. The only thing that I would kind of caution you about is that you do need to dry it off very quickly because putting that much water on wood that is unfinished can cause issues. So you need to just plain soap and water and wipe it really quickly so that way it doesn't kind of seep into the wood or cause any expanding or any issues like that. So I made sure to clean it immediately and that's why I did it in pieces there. But you can see I did a close up as best as I could. There's a split where the screws had cracked the tiny little piece of wood that they were being screwed into. This table is so petite and delicate, it's, it's obvious that issues like this are going to happen over time, especially with people just tightening it down instead of fixing the issue. That's what causes the, the break in the wood there. So I just pushed the wood back where it was supposed to go and then put a toothpick in the crack so that it would hold it there permanently when I go to screw in the screws again once I put it back together. So I just shoved it down into that little crease there and repeated the same thing for all four legs just so that it wouldn't happen again. And then of course, cleaning again. <laughs> I had to clean the whole piece. And as you saw when I first showed it to you, it was really, really dirty. It has been outside on my back porch waiting to be redone. And when I bought it, it at the yard sale, it was outside on a dirt lot. And when I glue this stuff back on, when you use Gorilla Glue, you have to dampen the area first. And then I am pretty generous with the glue here because it's going to kind of spread out as I push these back on and that is going to help really hold those legs on there and decrease the amount of pressure that's going to be on the screws when I screw it back in now that the table is holding on with a larger surface area instead of just at the ends with these screws. And this is really such an easy repair that anybody can do. I mean, just about everybody has toothpicks and a screwdriver and you can go pick up super glue and Gorilla Glue from Walmart or whatever stores are nearby. And then I am just prepping the whole area for paint. I ended up using DIY paints. I had some leftover, I still have some leftover from when I had first used them. They're not my favorite paints. They're not horrible, they're pretty good paints. It's just not my favorite kind of paint, just with the texture and the way that um, 
when you're working with it, when it dries, it looks like a totally different color. <laughs> that kind of freaked me out. You'll see it in just a minute. But the color I picked was Bohemian Blue. And I believe this was actually paint that a friend of mine had left over and she gave to me. And I really, really liked this color. That is definitely a big plus for the DIY paints. This is a great color. So if you want this exact color, then I would recommend getting it from the DIY paints store online or if you have any dealers nearby you that you can get it from. But here's what I was talking about, how it dries a different color than what you were working with originally. You have to kind of remember what it's gonna look like when it's sealed, uh, so that way you're picking out the right color wood stains and things to go with it. One thing I wanna really remind you guys though is that when you are painting, it's really about just having fun and relaxing. I know that a lot of us who flip furniture regularly sort of get this feeling like it's just a job and you're just trying to get stuff done and it's kind of stressful, but just remember to enjoy the process. It is art after all. And while that second coat of paint is drying, I am going to remove this stained finish using a heat gun and a metal scraper. You have to use a metal scraper so that it doesn't melt from the heat gun. You also have to use a glove that is like a welding glove or something that can withstand lots of heat because this thing gets way hotter than a blow dryer. And I absolutely love using the heat gun. It's like one of those weirdly satisfying things, <laughs> like just watching it peel back. I don't know if, if you're feeling the same way I do about this kind of stuff, but I just love it when the paint or the stains just peels off so easily instead of sitting there forever, destroying my hands, sanding this thing off. Although I do still have to sand it. And I used a palm sander this time. I have never used a palm sander on my channel before, but this is a piece that you will need one for because it needs to get into the cracks. If you don't have a palm sander, you could use an orbital sander and then you'd have to hand sand all the edges and cracks, which I was not interested in doing. <laughs> Who would be? I don't know. But anyway, you just sand it really well, smooth it really nicely, and then around the edges, I made sure that I hand sanded because I didn't want to damage the roundness there along the edge of this piece and I don't have a type of sander that would be able to sand that without sort of ruining the curve of the edge there and I needed it to be sanded and smooth in order to paint that edge. This little handheld broom is a tool that I think everybody should have in their toolbox if they're going to be painting and refinishing. It's a big help. And the stain I chose was the same as the original stain that was on here, which is red mahogany. I love this color. I don't have a lot of red mahogany in my own house, but it just looks so rich. And when you apply it, you're just going to apply a generous amount and then wipe it back. And especially when your wood is like really dry like mine was, it just soaks that stain up so well. And I don't really need to use any kind of pre-staining conditioner. The stain just looks amazing. Look at her. Look at this girl shining, looking all new. I can't believe how great that mahogany cleaned up. It really almost looks exactly brand new. And with that really beautiful bohemian blue, it's kind of modernizing it. And I feel like this is going to be a piece that will be able to carry on the character of like the antique character, but still look modern enough to where somebody could have it in their home and feel proud of it as something that they're going to use in modern times. And that's one thing that I always think about when fixing up antiques. Sometimes just simply restoring it to what it originally looked like won't make it into something that people will want to use. And it's important to make sure that you're making it to where you're gonna actually use it and it's not going to be like a museum piece. And I sealed this piece with a very controversial finish. <laughs> Every time I use a dark wax, I get tons of comments from people saying, gross, it just looks dirty, I hate it, it looks so good without the wax. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get those comments on this video too. But I was going for like a Harry Potter style, like, like antique library table. I wanted it to look 
old and have a lot of depth and dimension to it. So I put on that dark wax and then I just distressed it a little bit and then completely blended all that dark wax in and around the distressed areas with some clear wax. And then you just wipe off the excess and buff it till it's shiny. And for the feet, I went with a rose gold color because I knew that the rose gold over the brass would look copper. Look at the finish. <laughs> For those of you who say it just looks dirty, well, I'm sorry, but I love it. It seems like something that you just pulled out of like the Loch Ness. <laughs> I love the color and the tone and the depth of it all. It just, I, I loved this piece. So I'm going to be sad to see it go, but I am going to be donating this piece to children who are aging out of foster care. I should say young adults who are aging out of foster care. And I hope that somebody loves it just as much as I did. For my next piece, I have this couch that I got for free. Like I was saying, it was donated by a wonderful couple. Um, a, the woman's father was being moved into assisted living and he was going to be donating most of his furniture to me to donate to kids who are aging out of foster care. All of the upholstered pieces that I fix up, I treat for bugs. This is the powder that I talk about a lot that I use for my upholstered pieces. You can use any brand of this powder. Just make sure it is for bed bugs because some kills bed bugs and some doesn't. So you need the one that also kills bed bugs. And you're going to apply it really good in all the crevices and stuff. And then you're going to go back over it with a brush. I use my handy dandy little hand broom and brush it into the fabric. Make sure that you wear a mask during this. I use a respirator mask because regular masks, in my opinion, are not very effective, but you don't want to be breathing in that powder. It has a lot of diatomaceous earth in it, which is uh, really bad for your lungs. It is, it's something that prolonged exposure would not be good. But you're just going to clean it all off using a shop vac. A regular vacuum will not work well for this because it is such a fine powder, it will end up clogging everything up. <laughs> Use a shop vac, you gotta bring in the big guns for this. But when you vacuum it off, it kind of has the same effect as baking soda where it pulls all the dirt with it. And this couch had no stains on it. It's amazing the condition that it was in. No stains, no rips, no issues whatsoever. So I just shop vac it really, really well and it looked amazing. I did not feel like I needed to go back and shampoo it. I think if I did do that, it would end up leaving marks instead. <laughs> so then from there, I just make sure to clean the frame off before I painted. I'm using this interior and exterior grade oil-based paint. Oil-based paints are the ones that are gonna get you this amazing glossy look that I'm gonna have here. And I just hand painted it with an angled brush and you will see, I will give you some close-ups of how I avoided using paint tape on this piece. And it is, it's something that is kind of a learned skill, but you just move very slowly and when you use an angled brush, you can get perfect lines with practice. So that is something that I did on this piece and I wanted to show you guys because I avoid paint tape whenever I possibly can. There you go, see how I do that there? You just you have a really steady hand, like surgeon style, <laughs> just extra precise. Look at that. I'm even surprised by how precise this was, but I just was not gonna be taping that. It wouldn't, if I would've taped this, it's, it would've ended up having bleeding areas and it would've looked terrible. But instead, I got this really high-end look. This kind of couch would go for thousands of dollars online, and it took minimal effort, and it was super budget-friendly, just with a small portion of that can of paint. And the girl who received this was so thankful for it and happy because it was her style. I couldn't believe I found somebody with that style. <laughs> and now I have my final little table here. This came from the same yard sale as the first table that I did in this video, and it was... It was uh, needed some work. It was not like the most high-end table. It was even made mostly of plywood, but it was kind of a mid-mod style. It had a signature on the bottom that said MC, although I could not find anything about that maker, so it could just be somebody's initials. And it had originally a big piece of stone on the top, but it was very like broken and chipped on the edges. So I took that off, and then I removed the felt pads that were on there, 
underneath that big old piece of stone and then I sanded it nice and smooth so that I could put a new piece of tile on there. I went to Floor and Decor and picked up a floor tile that was made completely of marble and that way it would look like this table has a marble top on it and I believe that the floor tile was around $10. So now this table has a marble top on it for $10 and if I had to like do the math on what I spent on this table I got a huge haul for 75 bucks so I would say that this table probably cost me in total like maybe two dollars to buy from the yard sale then the ten dollars of the tile on the top and then I got like three cans of spray paint so we're looking at less than twenty dollars for a marble top side table so I'm just going to dry fit it on here and make sure that my tile fits I don't know how I got this lucky it, that's how you know you're doing something good because you get lucky like this but this tile fit exactly the same size as the tabletop I didn't even have to trim it the color I chose was spring green I was really like inspired by this style I guess it's oh I think it's called like grand millennial style I, I don't know if I'm saying that right but it is a style that is kind of like palm springs bright colors like this spring green and bright blues but there was some issues about this table that I had to fix but don't worry I can fix it and I used to use shellac on the areas that were like this I don't even know how to describe that it's just you can see the end grain of the plywood under the paint and a lot of people would see this happen and think oh no it's ruined I, I can't use spray paint I'm gonna have to use a brush and paint it to cover that up but shellac actually does a really good job of covering that up and giving you a perfectly smooth texture when this happens I wouldn't recommend doing this over like big gouges and things like that but when it's just the plywood texture it definitely can do the trick then I just went back and made sure that I painted a second coat and covered the feet of the piece in, in the same green paint. I left the initials exposed underneath, so it's not that I didn't want to paint the bottom. I just like to leave that little hint of its history on there so that somebody else can discover that later on. I don't like to cover that up just for the sake of painting the bottom. Now I'm going to use some E6000 glue to glue on that big old piece of tile and you're going to put some really big dollops on here so that way when you squish it down it kind of creates a suction and that will suck the tile to the table as it is drying and give it a really strong hold. E6000 is a really good versatile glue that can do lots of really cool stuff. I really loved this table and I wish I could have kept it because it was just so cute in my opinion. But I have a feeling with those sharp edges it has that my toddler would end up banging his head on there or something. So it's got to go. I can't wait to meet the person who picks out this table from all the items that I am donating. I send out photos and those photos get sent out to the young adults until somebody sees it and they say they want it. So whoever wants this bright green table, I am so happy for them and I am so happy that I'm not the only one who loves it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe down below so that you can see more. If you are somebody who would like to donate furniture to youth that is aging out of foster care in your area, I would highly recommend that you reach out to foster care agencies in your area until somebody responds back to you. Let them know what you'd like to do, and I'm sure that you will find somebody who's willing to get you in touch with the people in need. Thank you for what you're doing.